LED Pro, what will they think of next? Hey, what's going on guys, Mike here. Today I'm over at my friend's house taking care of his 40 gallon tank while he's away on vacation, and I thought I'd bring you guys along for the ride. So this is his 40 gallon tank, which used to be my 40 gallon tank. We just took the rim off, braced it here with a piece of glass, and it's been up for about eight months now. And as you can tell, it's pretty dilapidated. I was over yesterday, did a big water change on it, pulled some of the high out of the back, which you can kind of see. And now today, we're gonna do a little bit more work on it, primarily setting up a new filter. What else, what else do we have on this tank? We got a wave maker back there in the back. It's like a $12 power head. I think it's rated, it's a pretty fast one. It's rated at like 800 gallons per hour, which is, uh, I, I don't think it's too much for a 40 gallon tank, but it's definitely, it's definitely enough. Um, and then he also is using my old Phoenix Fusray LED, three foot LED. And it's, I mean, it is what it is. It's not high light, it's not low light. It's right there in the middle, which I think is, is good for this tank. The one thing and the reason why this tank isn't doing well in my opinion is because it doesn't have CO2. Uh, the other reason being, which may contribute or may not contribute, not 100% sure at this point, um, is that they're on well water out here and the pH is like 7.8 to 8, which is a little on the high side. That's, I like to stay away from that. I like to run my tanks at like 6.8. So um, again, not 100% sure if that's the cause of some of the problems that have been going on with this tank, but it could contribute. So this is the old filter that was on the tank, this canister that we made out of PVC a while back. And what happened was I was over yesterday doing water changes and the pump gave out a piece, a couple of the plastic pieces on it just snapped when I was taking everything apart. And so he told me to just go ahead and get something that was easier, something that, you know, he didn't want to have to work on much or have to, you know, with this thing, you got to get a pipe wrench out, take it off, clean it. You don't have to do it all the time, but it's kind of annoying. So anyway, he had me pick him up a new filter and I just emergency bought this on Amazon, this Quiet Flow 50, which is meant for tanks up to 50 gallons. If you're going to go by the book, you obviously don't have to, of course, if you have a planted tank. I would hardly call this a planted tank though, honestly. Um, but I thought this was really interesting. I don't know if this is new technology or if this is last year's technology or what, so let me know. But it has a built-in LED here that will blink red or stay solid red, I'm not sure, uh, when your carbon filter needs to be replaced. So I thought that was pretty crazy. I, I don't know. You guys let me know if that's new technology or what. Um, I don't use carbon in my filter, so this is not something that, you know, I wouldn't go out and buy this filter just because it has that, obviously, because I don't use carbon. But it has some other interesting features that I wanted to share with you. Interesting feature number two is that it has a specialty filter pad that's in the end portion here. You know, they, they uh, the older filters, they just have a, a higher surface area piece that you put in there and it trickles down so you sort of get that, uh, you know, that trickle, the trickle filter effect here uh, right before it enters the tank. Um, but now, now they'll sell you more stuff, of course, which are these little pads here. And I don't know if we're gonna get a focus on this or not, but basically there's three different kinds. There's an ammonia reducer, uh, another, you know, a, another carbon piece to, uh, to keep pulling other uh, contaminants out of the water. Just, I mean, you already have carbon in there. So if you need, if you need more taken out, there's another piece for it. Um, and then the other one, which I thought was actually kind of cool was the phosphate remover. So if you have a planted tank or you just have a regular tank, phosphate concentrations are usually always pretty high. Um, in my tanks at home, basically my phosphate concentration is always above five PPMs. And you know, whether or not high phosphate contributes to algae is sort of one of those things where, you know, if you, if you read science papers and things like that in natural environments, when there's high phosphate, there's usually also uh, high iron and other nutrients associated with runoff that would then cause algae. But it's sort of, it's hard to say whether or not phosphate uh, by itself in high concentrations can influence the algae in your aquarium. It's sort of, it's sort of a debated topic, especially these days. And you know, all this stuff, I mean, having to buy things like carbon and other little pieces on a semi-regular basis for your filter, I think it's kind of ridiculous. Um, it's definitely not necessary, especially if you have a, you know, a good planet tank. This, I again, I would not call a good planet tank. We're gonna try and make it good, uh, but you know, we got a lot of work to do. So you guys know all about these filters. I'm gonna go ahead and 
set this bad boy up really quick. I don't think we need to go through the whole process of doing it. Um, if you guys are interested in this filter at all, I mean, it's a good filter for, you know, a beginner tank. Obviously, you don't have to use all of the features and stuff that this thing comes with. Um, but I'll throw a link to it where I got it on Amazon. It's pretty cheap, like 25 bucks. So, um, you know, if you want a good HOB, I don't think you're, you're really not paying extra for these added features and things. And look, we get a little, uh, that's probably a carbon pad. We'll take a closer look, but yeah, I'll throw a link down in the description to it on Amazon. If you guys want to check it out a little bit more. All right, guys. So we got the filter on the back of the tank, pretty easy to set up and all that. Uh, I mean, essentially the same as any other HOB that you've set up a million times in your life. The only difference again was the light here, which you had to snap into place. And then there's also this extra piece now that sort of keeps, um, I, I don't know, I don't really know why it's there. Um, it's got a little pocket for um, the sensor. Actually, after I thought about it for more than a second, this piece has gotta be to keep the water from splashing over the sensor. So if you can see with it removed, it gets pretty crazy there. There's a lot of current. And when you put this in place, if I can get it in here, on the first try, there we go. It keeps the water really still, and that's gotta be so that the sensor can work more efficiently. And what I did um, was put in a couple, you can't really see them, but I put in a couple of um, pot scrubbers from the canister filter that, you know, that's some cycle media that's helping it seed the rest of the filter. But uh, I decided to leave the carbon in because I wanna see how this, how the indicator works out. Um, again, not the quietest thing in the world, Pretty much every HOB filter is gonna be quieter with the lid off. Here, if you can listen. You got that rattle from the lid. And then we take it off and that goes away. But you need to have the lid on if you want the indicator to tell you when your carbon's done. So I'm interested in seeing how long that lasts. It's supposed to be, you know, it says like two to three weeks, but that's obviously dependent on how much how much you're feeding your fish and, and other things like that. So now we're just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move some rocks around. I got some uh, some manzanita driftwood over here that I'm probably gonna pop in there. And we're gonna see what we can do to save the look of this tank. I also have some, uh, some stem plants that I wanna put in the back. I don't have them here with me today. Um, this is gonna be something that's gonna take me a couple trips out here to complete. But let's go ahead and redesign sort of the, the feel of this tank. All right guys, so I have successfully made the tank even more messy, uh, but you can see I kind of moved some rocks around and made a little cave in that portion for the catfish and got another rock over here on the left. Now I think it just needs a few more rocks and of course a lot more plants. It ended up bailing on the driftwood. I, I don't know, one of those big pieces didn't, uh, wasn't waterlogged, so I don't, I don't want to have to mess with that getting you know, holding it in place with rocks and all that. I'm not gonna do a water change here before I leave. One, because I'm kind of pressed for time, and two, that new filter is gonna have this thing cleared up in no time. Don't forget guys, if you're working at somebody else's house, even if it's just a little bit of work on a fish tank, you can make a huge mess. And this isn't that bad, um, but of course I kicked over the canister filter and spilled a bunch of brown water uh, on the carpet. Gotta deal with that, gotta get all this stuff put away. All right guys, it's gonna wrap it up for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a big thumbs up. Also head over to Instagram and follow DIY Aqua Pros. I've been posting pictures every day and I really appreciate the support. Take it easy guys and we'll see you next time.